everyone and welcome along to our watercolour and coloured pencil class creating this elegant flamingo. Before we get started, let me just tell you what I'm using. So, the paper. I'm using hot pressed watercolour paper. This is actually in a block so I didn't need to pre-stretch it. Um, and it's hot pressed, which means it's smooth. So your pencil layers will go nicely and blend nicely on a smooth surface rather than a cold pressed paper, which is more bumpy. I'm going to be using my size 12 and size 6 brush to apply the watercolour, which is just three simple colours, a bit of rose, a bit of red and some yellow ochre. And then on to our pencil. Where's my list? So we've got some brown ochre, some light flesh, Payne's grey, deep red, can't see for looking, deep red, some salmon, carmine, and a ready violet. Um, I've also got um, an ivory. I'm not sure if I put that on the list. Ivory we're going to use to blend layers together so it's a good if you haven't got ivory white will be fine so those are our colors and i have a pencil for sketching out the bird and rubber to get rid of my mistakes plenty of tissue some water and a mixing palette that's everything so let's get started so generally doing a bird like this i'm looking at simple shapes so he or she is very much a teardrop shape, so I'm just going to go across, very light and sketchy. Come across, got a bit of a feather sticking out down to the towel. And of course you can trace down or you can freehand, really doesn't matter, whatever you're comfortable with. So we get that general shape, that teardrop shape of the body. And they're all legs, aren't they? They're really long in the leg. In fact, the legs are the longest part. So if we partition this off, if we were to fold this in half, the legs come higher than the head. They're all about the legs. The leggy bird. I'm just going to put some feathers down the bottom there. And they're going to come round that neck. Now you could draw this in very simple lines. So you could take the S shape as a line round and then once you're happy with your shape bring the neck in because if we think about things in very simple shapes the, the head the neck gets slightly thinner towards the head it's not much it doesn't fatten much as you come down and then the head's really just a little ball as well so you've just got this circle at the top you could draw a circle and then shape it. Very, think of things in simple shapes. You're coming into the eye, down towards the beak. I better put my glasses on. We get an eye strain already. And then down to the beak. Very funny looking things, aren't they? It's not until you draw them that you really take notice of them they are quite peculiar birds very prehistoric looking so coming out and then dips right down to that lovely big beak ready to catch all those juicy fish and then notice the lower beaks wider much wider than the top i guess that's where all the fish that it scoops up go and the eye's tiny in comparison to the rest of the bird. I'm just going to tidy those lines up. If I can find my eraser, it's here somewhere. Oh. That one will do. I'll use the one on the end of my pencil. And then just get rid of the lines if you are freehand sketching your birds the kind of guidelines that you use, just get rid of those. Beaks bigger than the head. 
And then we come into those lovely long legs. Let me try and get this angle right as it comes across. Let me stride in. And we come to the ankles and I was reading up on these birds and quite interestingly, what we would call the kneecap here is actually their ankle equivalent to our ankle the way that it flexes and their knees are up here up in the plumage so their knees right up there and this is the ankle who knew what we do now and coming out the other side i'm looking at the shape in between the legs this triangle to make sure i've got the gap about right down to the ankle as i now know and they're not symmetrical either so you've got the bump here and the bump at the back is slightly further back interestingly and we come towards the water and then just fan out for the foot the other good thing about doing it in water is you don't have to worry about their feet. Apparently, different species have different numbers of toes. So they either have three, which all point forward, and some of them have a fourth with a little digit pointing backwards. I'm not sure which one this is. So there we are with our basic shape. I'm just going to get rid of another couple of lines in the face there. I want that head a little bit bigger. the neck under the jaw that looks about right okay so that's our basic shape down and now we do need to sketch in some feathers so we really want to see where these bigger feathers are they have tiny smaller feathers on the top coat and these quite big i'm just having a look at the leg the leg comes back here we've got a few little feathers underneath and then the lighter ones I'm focusing on around here. Just going to get us some few basic shapes in to where these big feathers are sitting. And a few coming a bit lower. Obviously overlapping each other. And we're really focusing when we're looking at our birds at the direction that the feathers are laying and as we come down the back they change direction so we're coming straight down the body here and then as we come back they're going more towards these bottom ends and laying more lengthways so we just get some of that pattern going on another big feather really big big feathers And I think maybe he's just had a little shake. So he's got that feather sticking out at the side. And then here there's some very soft downy feathers just coming across from the neck, down the legs. We've just got some patterns in there to help us when we come to put some more detail in. I've caught up with you all now. I think that shape's slightly out. I'm going to give them a bit of a higher back. I'm going to make them a little bit fatter. I don't want him too skinny or her. There we go. What I thought, time allowing, at the end, I'm, I might put some watercolour wash in the background, just a hint of some blues in the background, but we see how we do for time. Anyone else joined? No? That's it. Four of you. That's not so bad out of 12. Okay, now the picture reference pictures down in the corner of the screen, just about there, the end of my paintbrush. The colours you're seeing on my page, because of the bright lights in the studio, this, this is the same photo, but it'll see how more muted it is. So every now and again, when I lift this up, you'll see the true colours, you see, when it's lifted up away from the light. So I'll lift up my work now and again so you can see the colours better. I have got my board raised, but 
I can't have it right up. Maybe when we come to do the pencil work, I can. Okay, then we're ready to get started with some colour. And we're going to start with a very pale pink. Now, if you've got, I was playing with my pinks earlier. This is the kind of hue we want really watered down pinks. And I'm actually going to start with my red. Let me find my red here. So I'm going to take a little bit of pigment and a lot of water. So we want this really pow and washed out a bit more. We need quite a bit more than that in this. There we go. And watercolour and coloured pencils work so well together. I've done quite a few lessons um, using this combination. So we're going to start. I've just realised I didn't put any water in my pot. One second, ladies. This is water. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Okay. <laughs> right, so just clean water to start. Oh, someone else has just joined. Okay, right, so even the whitest feathers, the light ones, do have pink in them. So we're going to take an all over wash over our bird to start with. So I'm just going to take water because I want our colours to flow around and we're going to work wet into wet. So I'm just taking water down the neck, around the body. Use the edge of your, the point of your brush as you come down that edge. Keep it nice and sharp. Just clean water. And then coming in to the main part of the body. Use that tip of the brush as you guide. Guide your brush around. Now you don't want puddles and puddles of water. To spread that colour out. You want it to be glistening, but not to have puddles. And nice and even. It's hard when you're just painting with water to see where you've gone. There we go. Down to the feathers. We'll come back and we'll do the legs separately. Okay, leave the beak dry. We're not going to touch the beak. So the head, down the neck and into the body. And then with your diluted red, I'm, going to sit, I'm just going to touch down and see how, how it looks. There we go, lovely. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to spread this colour around. Now those of you that have done my watercolour classes before know I like to drop colours in and let them sit. But in this instance, I want this spread out and thin down even more so I just get a light colour all over the bird. Really pow into the head. I'm going to start at the top of the head. I'm starting by touching in just with the tip of the brush. Get that paint down and then spread it round. Try and stay within your lines. Just moving that puddle. Look, there's the puddle. Just pushing it along. You see that puddle? And push it. And push it. Spread that out. As I say, we're thinning that colour down even more. So we've got a light puddle of colour, mostly water with a hint of, of the red, which looks pink when it's watered down. And then we've also got the water on the page, which is diluting it further. And then by spreading it, we're thinning it out. Wonderful. You can see I've got a little puddle there on the neck. Can you see that shine? That's where the puddle's sitting at the edge of the paper. So I'm just going to suck that up with my brush. There we go. Okay, sticking with the same colour. I'm going to add a slightly bit more pigment to my puddle. You see my mixing palette there. 
just a couple of drops extra colour so we're making it slightly darker and now we're going to add some variation to that pink so I'm looking at the photo looking where he's darker or she I'm just going to touch in this time I'm going to touch and leave so just using the tip of the brush touching into the head and then leaving it alone and if we look down the neck on the left hand side we want a bit more colour, pick up a little bit more paint, now it's going to spread because we're working wet into wet, I'm only going to touch it on the left hand side, and just let it spread over on its own. It's going to give us that nice mottly look, we just need a bit more paint there, nearly run out. And then there's a shadow being cast by our um, flamingo. I was going to say ostrich then, that's another lesson. He's darker here, where his own head is creating a shadow on him. So I'm going to come in here between the neck and the shoulders and drop some more colour in. Taking it slightly stronger again, a bit more pigment, and just touch in. And let it flow, just let it move on the paper. Now I have got my bald ray, so things are falling down. Because of the light in the studio, I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. But you should work flat at this stage. I might flatten it and then lift it in a little while, actually. There we go. Let's flatten that out. Now can you see what's happened to mine? It's spread, because we're working wet in wet, it's spreading along his neckline. But I like that, because it's given me a nice, can't speak, a nice dark edge. I'm going to go along that neck again. A bit more pigment. Just using the very tip of my brush, coming along the left hand edge. Tidy up the top of his head, that's a bit messy. I'm just tidying that up, coming right up to my pencil line. In his head. And I want a bit more colour there too, so I'm going to go in again. Wet into wet, just touching in a little bit more pigment. I think it's because I had my paper raised up, now I've flattened it, it will stay where I put it. A little bit darker again. As the paper starts to dry, the paint will move less. You start to gain a bit more control. And then let's have a look at our bird again. I'm going to move that up there so I can point things. As we come across the top of his back, he's darker. I'm just bringing that colour along the back. We're not going to um, worry about individual feathers, but just creating some patterns, some darker areas. But your brush strokes should follow the angle that the feathers are growing. That will help. Now, my one's body started to dry already. Can you see my paint here is sitting where I've put it and it's no longer blending? I'm getting lines. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do, if that happens to you, take a Take your wet brush, I need a bit of tissue, oh there it is. Get rid of the excess water, you don't want too much water, and I'm going to come in towards that colour where it's stopped moving, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of water on that underside where I got those lines. I don't want the lines, it's just a bit of water for it to soften. So now they've gone, and I've got this just gentle blush. I've got the heater up full whack here today because it's been really cold this evening. Around 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon, I really felt the chill come in the studio. Okay, so let's have a look where some, some more darker colours are. I'm just going to use the shape of my brush to touch down. And use it 
really to indicate feathers because the shape of your brush is very similar to the shape of a feather. Just touching in some darker, more intense colours down the bottom. Coming off the neck. And I am going to kind of paint in the negative. So these um, feather shapes along this middle section, I'm going to bring this colour, this darker colour, up and under them so that the lighter feathers show up. And then his belly, or her belly, is going to be dark. Using the shape of the brush, just tapping in, tap and lift. Don't spread it down the front of the leg. So this is called painting in the negative, where you paint around a particular shape. Now, again, if you're getting any strong lines, there's one I don't like. I want a strong line here, that's fine. But here, I've got a line again. So I'm going to take that brush, wash it. Tap it on my tissue and just come in. Whoops, put my finger in his head. Just come in and soften the back edge. I'm definitely going to have to do a background now because I've just smudged him. Let me try and lift that out. Oh, how annoying. It's so pretty. Now, don't worry if your pink's looking too pink because flamingos do come in different colours. I've looked at lots of photos. Um, the one we picked up tonight is more salmon colour, but it's our pencil work over the top where we're going to get that salmon colour. So don't worry about your pink at the moment. Just going to take a sip of coffee. And I'm going to use my smaller brush, just whilst we're waiting for things to dry off, I'm just going to tidy up my line along that neck. A touch more colour. Everything's starting to dry now. In the time, I don't want it bone dry, otherwise I'll end up with a line. We don't like lines. I'm just tidying up that line. And we can use our pencils to do that as well. I do that bit. Wonderful. Okay. We're going to go down the legs next. Now the legs are interesting because they're kind of a, an ivory colour but with hints of pink. So we want to go back to our very light colour. And just like we did with the body, we're just going to bring water down the legs. water all the way down to his foot. Now I'm definitely going to put water at the bottom of mine so I'm not going to draw his feet in. They're quite ugly anyway. And we go with that water, just clean water, then into my pink, lighten it a bit more because we've added to it so we want to add more water to lighten it again. And I'm going to pick out the more obvious pink areas. So look at those kneecaps or ankles, as we now know. We're just going to drop that strong colour, well, strongish, into the kneecaps on both legs. There we go. It will naturally start spreading along the waterline. I'm using my number six brush. And then there's a bit more pink down the bottom. So his foot is very pink. I'm going to pop that in as it goes into the water. And then I'm just going to come down the left hand side. It's going to bleed over. But focus, come right up on the point of your brush as you pull down the left hand side, just the tip of your brush against the paper, very thin line, all the way down, 
And just like before, because the paper is wet or damp, that will gently bleed over the other side, but leave us with enough light to pick up those light colours in the plumage. A little bit more pigment in my puzzle now. A little bit more. I'm going to go into the knees again or the ankles. Add a bit more colour, a little pop of colour, pop of colour in that foot, just before the water on the other leg. I'm just going to take that colour in the ankle and pull it, not spreading as much as I'd like, but I'm just going to pull it where I want it to go. Just use the colour that's already down and nudge it either side. There we go. So we've got this more pinky area in the middle of the leg. Okay, but because we've just moved it, because we've just pulled some of that pink up and down the leg either side, I'm going to go back whilst it's still damp and put another pop, stronger colour in that kneecap or ankle. It will lighten as it dries. Okay, fabulous. Now I asked you to also bring some yellow ochre. So we're going to take the yellow ochre next. I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes to finish off your plumage. Now the other week I was doing a class and I was taking my time. And at the end of it, everyone had finished apart from me. <laughs> so it really is hard to judge the pace, but I try. Okay, I'm going to mix up some yellow ochre. Take a little bit of yellow ochre into a puddle because again we're using all our colours very pastelly. And there's just a hint of colour in that beak. I'm not going to wet the whole beak. This time I'm going to work wet on to dry so I've got a bit more control. And I want that yellow ochre in the white area of the beak as you see it. At the bottom, just a little bit, and coming in towards the eye. Make sure your pink's dry, it should be by now. Coming into the eye. And at the base of the black, so where the, where the white's going to join the black, a little bit of yellow ochre there, nice hint of colour. Not too strong. I'm going to lift that up because the light's shining. There we go. You can see that there. They are very bizarre birds, aren't they? So that's all we need of the yellow ochre in the beak. Now I'm going to take my rose. You can see in my palette, there's my red. This is my rose, much more pinky. Watered down again. And the reason we've got the red and the pink, the pink is a cooler colour. It has an element of blue in it that gives it a cooler look. And we're going to go and apply this to some of the shadow areas. So I'm going to come in around the neck again, over the top of our red, very watered down, not strong. And look how I'm using that brush, just stamping, stamping over the top in that neck area. 
you could use magenta or rose, anything that's a pinky tone. The shadows are always a cool based colour. And then under the belly, pin that in, coming up under the feathers. Remember what I said about painting in the negative? I'm using my brush shape. This is my size six. Just to use that point to come up as if I'm painting underneath the feathers. We're going to darken all this down with our colour pencils when we come to the pencil element. It's just getting some lovely base colours in for us to work with. A good reason for using watercolour and pencils is that it speeds things up. If you was to do this all in just colour pencils, it could it will take a lot longer. And putting these colours on underneath gives us something to work with. I'm just going to lift that up so you can see the colours better. There we go. And let's come into those feathers at the top of the leg with our pink as well. The ones that are sitting behind, with just the very tip of my brush, tapping in a hint of some feathers at the top of the leg. Looks like a turkey. There we go. So you can see that dark a bit on the neck. If I hold this that angle, you can see my colours better. I'm just going to make that a bit wider. This is my rose. Catching that shadow. It's really quite dramatic. And as I say, slightly different from the reference photo. I'm, I didn't ask you to bring any blue, but hopefully you've got some blue watercolour nearby. I'm just going to put a hint of the water at the bottom. I've got phthalo blue, but you could use Prussian blue, ultramarine blue. It really doesn't matter what blue. I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. I'm just going to bring some water in really simply. Going to come right by that foot. Let me move that up a bit so you can see better. On the tip of the brush, and I'm just going to pull out to the left and right of the foot. And then just lines sweeping from my shoulder, picking up that colour, just creating a few lines, a few ripples. So light. Just swing the arm. Just that hint of water at the bottom. And let's go one stage further and bring in a reflection of the foot and the legs as well. I'm going to come to the foot with my red that we used at the beginning. Just pull a little bit of a reflection through the water. That's all we need. Very subtle. I've not gone too dark. Just a hint. I'm just going to get rid of those words off the screen. I forgot to remove those from a previous. It won't be a second, just get to make those disappear because they're in the way. There we go, that's better, isn't it? Now you can see better. Now, I'm going to mess up that reflection to make it look like there's ripples. So I'm going to go into that pink with a dry brush and just swipe here and there through that reflection. Just pick a bit of the pink up and move it.
Okay, our water work is done. That's all we're going to do in the watercolours. So the next job is to dry it off. Grab a hairdryer if you've got one. If not, waft it around or blow it gently. I'm just going to dry this off because we don't want to put our um, oil or wax-based pencils onto water. It will give us far too strong a mark. So your paper needs to be dry for the next part. Oops. Here we go. do is take a light flesh tone. This is where we're going to calm the pink down and get some more of these salmony colours coming through. So I don't want you to press hard with your pencil. You, you can cause too much shine on your paper. So we're going to shade gently but in a circular motion. We'll start on the neck. You're not going to see a huge difference but it will tone down the pink. It's coming all over that head. Gently, don't push hard, hold your pencil back midway. If you come down here, it's going to make you want to push hard. So release that pencil. It's very subtle. I was just thinking earlier today, I did a class, or oh, probably two years ago, at the beginning when all of the lockdown started of a strawberry in watercolour and um, colour pencils. And that was good, really quite fine detail. So I'm going to stay away from the back of the neck. I want this to remain lighter as we come down. And then this middle section is quite light. So we're going to change. When we come here, we're going to bring our white in. A circular motion, shading in that circular motion. And what we're doing as well as kind of toning it down very slightly is adding our wax or oil, depends what pencils you're using, over the surface of the watercolour. So as we come down the neck, I'm just going to use the flesh tone around the left hand edge. You probably see that the um, drama a bit more when you come over a bright colour like the pink. I'm going to switch pencils. I'm going to come into my cream or you could use white. And we're going to go over the lighter colour. I don't want to add any more strength of colour to the light areas of my bird. You can see how it can lighten your paint. Circular motion again. Shading in, gentle pressure around that curve of the back of the neck. So I've def definitely, I'm going to lift this up a bit. That helps. This is definitely lighter now than this. Okay, back to my flesh tone. As we come into that shadow area. The only place I want you to avoid are those light feathers. Look how white they look now. They're not, because we took pink all over them. But compared to the darker colours, suddenly they look white. I'm going to come over the top, the back.
just gentle circles. And when we come to this middle lighter section, I'm just going to bring a hint of the flesh tone over those petal petals. Why do I keep they look like petals, don't they? They do. <laughs> they look like petals. What do you what do you need? <laughs> Very light. Just a light coating of that flesh. Yeah, I, I saw that. Oops, I forgot to mute everyone. I need to send my, I already said this, but I need to send my transcript to uh, those three colleges. Okay, so is Mrs. Bauer letting you know what to do? Uh, I don't think she's in the building. Something strange with my computer. Bear with me a second. Mute. Yes. There we go. Coming down those towel feathers. So we're adding a bit more colour. Well, on my one I am. That was very light down that end. Now, my pencil, instead of doing little circles like I did on the net, I'm going to do bigger loopy circles. We're on bigger feathers, so my marks are going to be, my shading is going to become bigger. Bigger kind of oval shapes. Into that pink in the belly. And also at the top of the leg where I left it very light, just bring that flesh tone over. I'm just going to tidy up the edge of the neck as well with this colour. It's much sharper. Now he's looking a bit more salmon. I'm going to come down the legs as well, but down the front, come up onto the point of your pencil if you come down that leg, down the straight part, straight over the knee. Sticking to the front, the sunlight's hitting him. Obviously from above, but it's catching, it's coming from here. That's why his feathers are light there and why the sun's just catching that part of his neck. We're starting to enrich our colours as we layer. So all over with your flesh tone and then down the front of the leg. Given a hint of colour to those lighter feathers. Okay. So once we've got that cover all over, we're going to start going into some of the darker colours. So I'm going to use my deep red next and really focusing on where there's shadows, where there's darker areas of plumage. The natural place to go, let me bring my bird back. If I slot him under there actually, there we go, so I can point. So we're looking at this neck area here. It shows up better on the photo in the corner of the screen, colour-wise. And I'm going to take my red. I'm going back to circles again. Why? Because these are short feathers. Just taking red over the top where we put that rose earlier or your magenta earlier. We want to get more contrast going on in our bird. And I'm going to calm this colour down as well. I'm going to add We're going to build layers of pencil. That's what it's good for, building layers and blending colours. He's got much more of a blush going on here, and that is a distinct change here 
I've taken mine a little bit further forward than in the photo, where we've got that shadow and that change as so we come into the body. So let's go up to the head next, and we want to add more colour in the head. Small, small circles. I've just noticed my hand. I'm going to get rid of this water out of my way. We don't need that anymore. That's better. Okay, so as I come into the head, small circles, tiny circles, not too much pressure, just a medium pressure. You shouldn't be pushing or forcing this. You're better to layer than push hard. Adding that rosy glow to the front of this face. And I'm going to take it down the left hand side of the neck. Tiny circles. Just down that left side. We want a real contrast from the shadow to the light. Building up that value change on the front of that neck. It's really starting to give him form. Okay, I'm going to switch colours for a second and I'm going to go to my brown ochre. Very lightly, I don't want too much of this. I want to give him more of an orangey look. Now, if we did this colour on its own, it would be very brown. But as we're working in shading it very lightly, very lightly indeed, over the pinks. It's giving it that warmer glow, that orangey glow. You could use a yellow as well. I like this brown ochre, or yellow ochre would work well. Really giving them, I'm going to lift that up so you can see the colour better. You see that blush? Just changing that colour by taking one over the top of the other. Very lightly, very lightly indeed coming around the neck. I don't want to darken the neck, I just want to give it a very, a blush, a hint of this ochre. It's better if I lift it that way. I'm going to do the same over this neck area. It's going to tone down our pinks, make it a bit more shadowy. Over that shoulder and onto the neck. We're going to do lots of colour changes tonight. I'm just going to try something for a second. See which one I want to tell you to use. Mm. Yeah, let's go with that. So, um, your red violet is kind of magenta y, dark, ready violet. So it's red with a touch of blue. Again, because the red's got blue in it, it's going to be a cooler tone than this one. That's warm and that's cold because there's blue in it. I'm going to come in again in this shoulder area, taking it even darker. I'm focusing my attention along this line here, along the front as we come to the thigh, if you like, the thigh, and into the body, because there is a change there from the neck to the body. And I want that to be quite distinct. Just shading, shading, shading backwards and forwards to get that line from the thigh going into the body. I'm not going down the neck, I'm stopping there. Just getting a bit more form. So you can see where that body's sticking out. From the neck. 
so he's not flat anymore. Just give him that a few layers rather than push hard, just keep gently layering so you get that colour darker and darker. And then we can see that difference between there and there, there and there. I'm going to do the same at this at the top as we come over that shoulder, making that stronger line along that top line to come across the shoulder on the tip of your pencil. You're stepping right out from the paper. And then what I'm going to do is release the pressure on that pencil, hold it gently, think of the way the feathers are growing inwards. I'm just going to shade from that strong line, gently shading inwards, bring that colour forward, forward and down and over the shoulder, starts to come across as we go to the top. Gently shading in a kind of oval shape as we go. Slightly bigger than we did on the neck. Creating a subtle indication of feather shapes. This is our dark red, purple red, blue red. I always get the name red, violet, that's it. Purple, violet, all the same thing. A nice, cool colour. Isn't that lovely? It's like a blush, isn't it? That's fading strong along the shoulder and then fading in. There's a couple of dark spots in the plumage. So I'm going to find those and just pop them in with the pencil. A little line and then fade it out. Shade around that mark to so make your mark where the feather line is there's a couple of little notches along his back i'm putting those lines down and then just gently gently shade into the left hand side giving him some texture giving him some lumps and bumps think about it guys when light hits an object it'll hit a bump. It's like looking at water. So down here we've got dark and light. So water, think of it as a, a surface, as any surface, like a blanket. And where light hits, there's always a shadow. And that's what we're putting in here, the shadows behind where the light's hitting. Let's come down to some of these other feathers. So there's these feather shapes here. Where's my bird gone? Come back, bird. Stop wandering off. So we've got some feather shapes here, these negative shapes. So I'm going to come along the edge of a feather. I'm not going to go all the way round the shape. I'm coming on the left hand side. Let's do a couple. Down the left hand side. And this one. Down the left hand side. So suddenly, before we've done anything else, They've come forward. You can see that that is something laying on top of something else. They look a bit like a step at the moment because we've gone light, dark, light. So it's, it's like they're really raised. We want to bring these down, settle them in. So that's why we're going to shade along the left hand edge, gently, gently, blending that into the body. So it's not such a large step. Suddenly, look what happens to that shape. It's not as raised as that one. It's magical. It's magic. And into the next one. Shading away into the body. Flattening that transition from dark back to light. There's a few more shapes here. So where I see a feather shape, I'm going to add that stronger line and then fade it away each time to the left hand side. Let's pop another feather shape here. Fade it away. So relaxing. And add another shape there, a little indentation at the side. 
another one there, another one there. And fade underneath. Where we're coming round this way, bring the fade in away, shade into the body. Go from that dark line and work back, easing off the pressure on your pencil to get lighter marks as you come away. You see those? Fabulous. As we come up his body, there are more feathers laying, but the way the light's hitting is stronger and hitting more of the feathers. So the shadow is not as defined up here as it is down here. So I'm going to go lighter with my touch on that pencil as I bring the indications of these feathers in. It's not so dramatic a change. Much lighter. And then coming along the back. Think up, look at how, keep your eye on that reference photo. The direction's changing back here. I'm bringing those shapes in. It's kind of a V shape. Can you see that here? We've got these V shapes coming in between the feathers. I'm bringing those V shapes in. And then again, shading in the middle this time. The middle of the V shape. Very lightly fading that colour out. I've lost all sense of time because this is such fun. Okay. I'm going to switch colour now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick up my salmon. Here's my salmon. So that's the red we used at the beginning. That's that dark red violet. I'm going to my salmon. If you haven't got salmon, use a flesh colour and then we can use some yellow over the top. I'll show you. So something like a cadmium yellow will work. I might use that anyway. So it's a slightly different picture. And I'm just going to bring this salmon colour coming out of those shadows. There's a bit more orangey back here. Again, doing the same thing. Pick a feather, bring that line in, and shade, fade it away. Another strong line down towards the towel. This time, we're looking more at colour than shadow. His feathers are light and then darker here. So I'm putting my line there and then fading it upwards. Because it's not a shadow, this is colour. Talk that up so you can see the colours better. The peachy orangey colour. And I'm going to bring this same colour, keep it in your hand, because we're going to go back over the feathers at the top and add very lightly, shading in a bit more, add in a variety of colours. A pink bird is never just a pink bird. A white cat is never a white cat. We're looking at all those changes and subtle subtleties of the pinks that exist in our bird's body. And with this salmon colour, I'm holding it now right at the back, very lightly. Again, I'm going to shade in some salmon colour over the left hand side of these lightest feathers just add a bit more color there as we darken the, the darks the lights keep getting lighter i just want a, a hint of color there along that back i'm going to come in with my salmon along the back edge and then fade it in just like we did here 
with the um, red violet. And we'll do the same with the salmon. Fade from that dark, strong edge and blend it out, blend it down. Okay, I promise I'm going to use the yellow. Now it wasn't on the list, but if you haven't got a salmon colour, if you take, even if you take it over your pinks, your yellow will, will make it orange. Just like mixing paints, pencils are the same. If you take a yellow over a red, you'll create an orange. Let me prove that. So if we've got red, this is cold pressed paper, so it's bumpy. And there's my yellow. And I take the yellow over the red. You create your orange. It's not mixing as such, it's layering. And equally, take the red over the yellow, you'll get a different orange, slightly different. So you're using colour pencils like paint, but instead of it blending, it's layering, like looking through different layered of coloured glass. So that's what we're doing. So if you want a bit more of a salmony colour, take your yellow and glaze over the top. Okay. It's looking rather splendid, isn't it? Okay, we're going to go now. We're going to switch colour again. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee. We're going to go to Payne's Grey. So we're really moving him on now. We're going to darken. So we're looking for these real darks under here, under right under the belly, where the sun's not. We're going to come along that edge again. And these soft feathers at the back of his leg that's behind us. So I'm going to come into this V shape, come back from the towel. And it's just in there. Back from the towel, just in there. Put that triangle shape in with your grey. Again, if we use this grey straight on the paper, it would be darker than using it over the pinks. So we're really getting some shadow in there. And keep that coming under these towel feathers. Giving him depth, putting the shadow in. Now, I don't like using black. If you want that darker, I would recommend you take an indigo blue and a brown. Let me show you. So something like a walnut brown and an indigo blue. Is that my indigo blue? So you could take indigo blue, blue and brown, same as watercolours, will make a grey. You can just darken with that. I prefer just not to use black. It's just too harsh for me. You get much better results with these. I'm going to stick with my Payne's Grey. I'm going to come and look for those shadows under the belly. Making it more three-dimensional as we put these shadows in. And we'll round some of those feathers again. With some shadow. Look, keep looking at that reference picture. Look for those darks. We're really getting some layering. There's another feather that I missed out there. I just looked up at my screen and I see this feather needs a bit more shadow. And maybe this one. Just work your way around those feathers. Keep looking back at your reference picture. See where you want to add. That one needs to be a bit stronger. So I'm just going to go over it again. There we go. Now he's looking more feathery. And maybe slightly more under this one. Just tweak it and adjust. Always looking for those shadows. And it's about getting those contrasts in place that will give that sense of realism to your drawing. But I'm just coming along the edge of some of those feathers and adding a bit more value, a bit more strength to the colour. 
under this towel feather here, this one here needs a bit of colour. This is my violet, my blue violet, violet, red, red violet, there we go. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to switch to my salmon for this feather that's sticking out. Just make that a little bit more defined. And then a bit of shadow as it comes from under that feather on the back. Fade it away, shade, release that pressure and shade down. I'm really liking this bird. Ugly as they are. Okay, pain spray then, let's continue along our journey. I want to darken the shadow on his neck. So again, layer in my colours. Gently with the paint spray, don't go too strong. Just in my grip, taking my hand, I have to remind myself to do this, because if I'm here, I tend to be too, too strong. So just re releasing that grip and along this, darken that edge there and coming up under the head. It's all about that change in value, giving it that three-dimensional look. And that shadow comes a bit more under the neck, under his lovely long neck. And now we're really going to make that body pop out, is we're going to take it that dark area that we did. With our red violet, we're going to go over with the Payne's Grey. Shade over the top, come along his thigh, on that shoulder. Gently, deepening with layers rather than pressure. Just go back and forth to get a nice strong value. Can you lift that up. There we go. Can you see that? So there's a couple of other areas for our Payne's Grey. We're going to come into that pink that we put on his legs. Just shade in gently with the Payne's Grey, pushing those feathers back because they're from the leg that's further behind. And also I'm going to bring it down the top of his leg and create a bit of shadow from the body down the leg. Top of the leg. and into those feathers. And suddenly again, this bit's coming forward and we've pushed the shadows back. We're gonna strengthen the legs again by continuing that gray I'm going to pop my glasses on again, down that front edge. I do with sharpening my pencil really, never mind. And around the ankle or the knee and down the front. All about the contrasts, all the way down to his foot and into the water. Both legs, the same treatment. I'm going to bring a little bit gently into the reflection into the water. Very gently. The colour's never as strong in the water as it is out of the water. And can you see on his ankle, there's a little line there where his webbed feet start, his toes. I'm going to bring that in and lighter into the water. Lighter into the water. We're doing really good, guys. He's 
bring him back down. Isn't he looking jolly? Okay, I'm going to burnish now. When you're happy, I just want to bring all the colours together. So this is where my ivory comes in. I'm just going to shade over the top of everything. And that's basically helping those colours blend together. It's not going to change the colour. It's called burnishing. Some people do it with a tool. You can buy a burnishing tool, a colourless, like a colourless pencil. I don't bother with those. I don't see the need. I just use a light colour. Sometimes I'll use a very light grey. In this instance, I'm using my ivory or your white. Shading it all over the top to make sure he's uniformed, pushing all those colours together. Now the only thing is with our bird, he needs a beak, obviously, but I want a bit more texture to his neck. He's looking too smooth. We've got texture in the feathers, which we're going to accentuate in a minute, but his neck, I want it more fluffy, like little hairs, instead of smooth, like it looks now. So I'm going to take my salmon, where's it gone, here it is, back to those little circles, but not everywhere. So I'm lifting the pencil in between my circles, and just adding some texture. Remember texture, we only see texture because of the sunlight. Without light we wouldn't see it. So it's that play of light. Just doing tiny little circles, lifting the pencil in between. I don't want to look like spots. Gentle. Just an indication that he's not smooth like metal or plastic. He's not a plastic bird. Just giving him that mockery look. And I'm going to put a little bit. I think he needs a bit of a stronger colour there. So I'm going to take the red that we used at the beginning and do the same thing. I just want some dark marks and it's all mark making. Just lifting the pressure. As I'm going, let me show you, as I'm shading these circles, I'm pushing and then lifting. So I'm getting light and dark. So if this is the neck, we've got darker spots and lighter spots. So you get in this mottled look. That's what we're after. I'm going to avoid the highlight section because I don't want to darken him too much. Just give in a bit of texture to our bird. I'll bring that up to the camera. Perhaps you can see better. Can you see that? It's quite hard to pick up. Can you see that little slightly darker spots that are coming in? I'm going to put a few around the neck, but I'm going to do them in the shadow area. Okay, on to the beak. Let's get his beak in place. Payne's grey again. And let's just mark him where it needs to be. So we're going to come around the edge, nice and sharp, on the tip of your pencil. Let's get that shape in first and then shade in. So come around the edge. Actually, it comes down. Lengthen in a bit more sharply than I had it. There we go. And then as we come into the dark area, shading in circles again. And we're going to come into that line of the mouth up on the tip of the pencil. Follow it round. And then your line should get really thin. Lift up the pressure as you come up the beak. So push down here to get a thick line and then lift up 
and soften as you come back. Now we're going to go over this a few times. Tight circles, darkening, layering, making the colour more intense. Particularly around the edges. into that smile line, bring that smile line right down, it's very subtle but you should be able to see that line going from here and up, very subtle. In this photo his eyes, oh, I think he might be blinking, so I'm going to use my black to come into that little eyeball. Now I'm going to do a backwards letter C. I'm not going to do a circle, just a little backwards C. So I want you to come in like that to the eye. Okay? But it's tiny. That's better. And let's not forget he's got a nostril as well. Just up here, above the mouth, above his smile, a little nostril hole, very lightly. I'm really enjoying this one. Okay, I'm going to add a little blush of pink to the beak next. So once you're happy with the black and you've got his nostril on his eye, we're going to add a little bit of that salmon coming away from the grey just a little blush might take a bit of red in there as well just a little bit near the beak coming into the black Okay, time for an assessment now. Let's have a look. See if we need to change anything else. I think the shadow could be a little bit stronger on mine. So I'm going to use my grey, my Payne's grey, gently over that neck. Just gently, just a glaze. It's like a brush. Very soft application of grey in that shadow area over the neck. The back of the shoulders. And now I'm also going to tidy up his head with the pencil to get that head shape into place. Tidy up. I'm going to add a bit of shadow to his head as well. Let's let's have a look right up here, above the beak, where his head joins the beak. There's a shadow. So let's pop it in. His head's three dimensional too. Just going to darken that beak. I'm going to go over it once more. Tidy up the back of the neck. Okay, we've got plenty of time. So I'm going to do what I threatened to do. Last time I did it, I just did splatters over the back. But I've kind of got this thing in my head based on a little doggy I did yesterday. It worked really well. And I thought, let me show you. If you haven't seen it on Facebook, this is um, my Watercolour Wednesday group. If you've not joined yet, maybe you should check it out because it's only five pounds a month for a weekly lesson. We did this one to mark, to celebrate 101 members. We did a Dalmatian and I just bought this blue around the outside. And when I was getting ready for tonight, I thought that would look cool on our flamingo. So it's optional. You don't have to do it, guys. 
I'm going to. So it could be a failure. Maybe I should take a photo of this as it is first. Capture the moment for prosperity. Okay, I've captured that now. And then I can compare later. Maybe put a vote who likes what. So with just clean water, optional, you don't have to do this. I'm going to come under his belly there with water. And around the neck, maybe there. And then coming across. I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm just going to pick like an area. Put that water in. And I'm going to take my phthalo blue. I'm just going to drop it in. Now, because we've got pencil on there, the water's not going to go over our bird anyway. And just tap that in. And let it run in the water. Maybe you let me go first and then you decide whether you want to do it. I'm going to put this flat again. Put that flat. I'm going to come in behind the neck. Where did I put the water? There it is. I don't know, it just kind of gives his surroundings a hint at his surroundings for me. And then a bit more water. Fade it out. So it's just going to be a hint. So I'm not going to do it loads of places. How cool is that? I like it. I'm going to take it a bit stronger. So this is phalo blue that I'm using. You could use Prussian blue, ultramarine blue. Now look when the paint goes over the crowns. I'm going to put it over there on purpose, the crayons, the pencils, and it will just sit on the surface so you can lift it off. It's gone on his neck, but it's fine. And because I've done this, I don't think I want to splatter. I'm going to do this instead of the splatters. A bit darker in a couple of places. Just have a play. I like that. I like that a lot. And then I'm just going to bring water so it fades and fades and fades away to nothing. Kind of an indication of where he's living. I'm thinking about a bit over here. I don't know. No, I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave him like that. Just a bit more fresh water where it stops, just to keep it fading out to nothing. A bit stronger. Just let that play in the water. Have your paper flat. Oh, I think he looks grand. Maybe a little bit between the legs there. Fade, just a, a little hint the other side. Not as strong. There we go. Well, I hope you guys have had as much fun as I've had painting your flamingos, drawing, painting and drawing. Um, I didn't add any more pencil to his legs. I didn't think he needed it. You could go in if you think you need a bit more colour to his knees with your red or your um, red violet. Maybe add a bit more shadow in there. Now I've said it, I'm going to do it. And a bit too bit more to his foot. Now I look at him. I've added a bit of colour to the knees. I need to add the same colours to his foot. So there we go. Our finished flamingos. I really have enjoyed taking you through this class. It's been such fun. I hope you have enjoyed it too. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye now.